Hi guys, Graham here from Bamish Technology, your leaders in power products. Today I just quickly want to touch on the good old PWM solar controller. Now, um, they get a bad rap, but in some, some certain circumstances the PWM is actually not a bad little use, um, device to use, especially in some of your smaller arrays. Um, it's obviously cost effective and not wanting to spend a lot of money on an MPPT. Um, but if your solar is critical to you, obviously an MPPT or multi-purpose power tracker uh, is going to give you more benefits uh, over a PWM in, in all conditions. Um, but obviously if money um, doesn't enable you to do that, you don't, your funds don't enable you to do that, a pulse width modulation is still better than nothing. However, there are some circumstances where a PWM you have to take in consideration of when it's going to work and when it's not going to work. Um, in, if you're trying to charge or put power into a lithium battery, a PWM is not really recommended unless you can program it up and get customised settings in there to suit for lithium for the simple reason that because the way that pulse width modulation it, um, it basically gets it puts power in, uh, puts it in for a little bit, turns it off then sort of sees where it's at, where your battery's at, puts a little bit more in and then turns it off. Um, whereas a multi-purpose power tracker or an MPPT is constantly searching to get the maximum power out whatever the situation is. Um, but for lithium batteries, it will never get there because it has to pulse at a high enough voltage above the voltage of the battery. So PWMs generally need to be about three to four volts above the voltage of the battery. And as we know, lithium batteries have a lot higher voltage than a normal standard lead acid style of battery does. So therefore then it has to be even higher again to, to be able to be substantial uh, enough to put the current through into, into the lithium battery. The next hurdle it has then is to put it through at the right voltage uh, and keep it there. So as we know, lithium batteries um, need a higher voltage to, to get to absorption and then also to maintain a float level. They need to be up in that 13.5 to 13.6 mark um, for the float level, whereas on an AGM or a gel battery or your common standard lead acid deep cycle battery is around 13.2. So it will never maintain and charge there. However, at the same time, smaller systems, I believe, will never ever charge your batteries up to 100% all the time. They're just there to try and compensate and cover the loads that you're pulling off uh, the battery or pulling out of the battery, like your fridge. If it's two or three amps when it's cycling, you want it to try and cycle out of your solar or pull the power from solar rather than taking it out of your battery. So it's there just to help keep that uh, substitute that power and maintain your battery. However, if you've got a 200 amp hour battery with a 150 amp solar panel on it with stuff connected to it, um, you're never ever really going to get that battery up to 100% and fully charged just from solar because it can't do it within that time frame at all. Uh, and then of course at night time, you're gonna be pulling more power out of your battery again as well. So the PWMs are great for lead acid batteries and smaller battery banks and so forth, and they are still good for uh, lithium as long as you get a model like this one you can and change the settings. If it doesn't have a pre-programmed lithium setting in there, at least if you've got uh, somewhere that you can customise and get the charging parameters right for your lithium battery um, in there to do that. So that's the advantage of some of the uh, better PWMs where they are programmable and they have a display on them that you can actually see the settings and what's going in. So hopefully that enlightens you a little bit more about PWMs and their purpose and uh, yeah, it keeps you out of trouble and keeps you off grid for a bit longer. So until next time, Bye for now.